Welcome to Unit 14 in Lifespan Development. This unit is mostly about late life physical changes. We will discuss both the young, old, and the old, old years. So let's get started. First, we have to ask ourselves, what is successful aging? Is it aging without any physical or mental ailments? Would you like to live to 100 if you had good physical and mental health? Maybe successful aging is making the best of what you have. There is a saying, life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in an attractive and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in sideways, chocolate in one hand, champagne in the other, bodily thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and screaming, woohoo, what a ride. On the other hand, maybe there's a difference between successful aging, which is going full, full steam ahead to the end, like the saying above, and aging successfully, which would be described as being able to thrive on whatever life throws your way. The real issue in late life is not so much being ill as it is living as fully as possible in the face of our chronic diseases. How one lives in later life depends on nature, our biology, and nurture, having the right person environment fit. Normal aging changes are universal. Often this is seen as progressive signs of physical deterioration, many of which are programmed into our genes. We are built to age. Over time, these normal aging changes will slide into chronic diseases. So chronic diseases can be defined as normal aging taken to the extreme. Chronic disease is any long-term illness that requires ongoing management. Although we fear the idea of chronic diseases, many age-related diseases are not fatal. They simply interfere with the ability to function. They create problems with what is called activities of daily living. Activities of daily living, or ADLs, problems occur in two stages. First, there are the instrumental ADL problems, and second, there are basic ADL problems. The instrumental ADL problems are when people have trouble performing independent living functions. Independent tasks include cooking, cleaning, driving, and walking. Half of all people age 85 have some form of instrumental ADL problem. They need someone to watch over them a few hours a day. And you can hire someone to come to the house and cook or clean for a few hours a week. It's not a problem. Then there are basic ADL problems. People with basic ADL issues are unable to perform fundamental self-care activities. They cannot stand up, they can't get to the bathroom, they can't feed themselves. The risk of having basic ADL problems increases in the old, old years. And with basic ADL problems, the patient needs full-time 365 by 24 hour care. So this is what most people fear, living to this point. They do not want to be unable to care for themselves. But with the right care, you can still have a wonderful life. The aging path we all take is varied. We do not all age at the same rate. Our gender and socioeconomic status have influences on how we age. We've seen how women live longer than men, and how poverty is a destroyer of health, both physical and mental. Some of us are in great physical and mental health till the day we die in our sleep. The number of people who reach the age of 100 has doubled every 10 years for the last five decades, but living past 110 
is nearly impossible. The oldest verified person in modern times was 122. She was born in France in 1880. You can see in this slide, which shows centenarians by country, that there are 11 people who have been verified over 114 years of age. As of the year 2014, there have only been 34 people confirmed to live over the age of 114. These people are called super centenarians. There are currently 7 billion people on the planet, and that does not include all of those who have passed away since the 1880s when the records were first kept. I'm not certain what that percentage is, 34 divided by 7 plus billion people, but while it is certainly possible to attain 115 years, it is not very probable that you will. Since the oldest known person in modern times was 122, then we can say the human life has a maximum limit less than 123 years. More people than ever are living past 100, and some believe our lifespan limit is based on genetics. They say we're programmed to get old. Others believe that it is simple wear and tear. It isn't the programming, but the way we live. Scientists are trying to cure aging. The telomerase breakdown of the DNA causes aging. And you can check out the link in this slide to see more about telomerase or telomerase. If they can stop the breakdown, they can stop aging. Our average life expectancy has drastically increased and is approaching this maximum value of 122. They will not be able to reverse aging. With my luck, they'll stop aging right after I die. Or worse, they'll stop the aging process after I have basic ADL issues. But who wants to live forever? I just pray for two more days every night. As we have already discussed, researchers document a socioeconomic status, SES, health gap. In every nation, the higher the socioeconomic status, the healthier and longer lived people are. By the 30s and 40s, people show clear differences in the rate at which they age based on their socioeconomic status. Even children show more signs of disease if their mother does not have a high school degree. In countries with large income inequalities and no government health care, the low income crowd dies very young. This may explain some of the U.S. death rates. People below the poverty line in the United States show statistical similarities to people living in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, approximately 26% of the country still lives below the international poverty line, which means living on less than a dollar 25 cents per day. Of course, the most common age-related disease is arthritis. Low income or low socioeconomic status people are more apt to engage in high-risk behaviors, like smoking and drinking. They are more likely to eat less expensive food, which is the least healthy food. They are more likely to have chronic stressors in their lives. They are more likely to be unmarried or lack any other support, supportive nurturing relationship. They are more likely to live in a toxic neighborhood, and they're more likely to live 10 years less than the national norm. Another hurdle for the low income group is that low income people are more likely not to have any, any health care coverage. Even if they do have some kind of insurance, they are likely to have Medicaid, which pays so little that many doctors do not accept it. My grandfather, had to move our entire family from Pennsylvania to Georgia in 1920 to find a hospital that could care for my grandmother's illness. 
not every hospital back then could provide cancer care or even knew what cancer was. With the current state of U.S. health coverage, it isn't much better for the poor today. They have to move to an area where there is a doctor who takes Medicaid or use an emergency room. When people who cannot pay for medical care get free health care at the emergency room, who pays for it? You and I do. So we're paying for their health care. If those people can get regular health care, they'll be healthier and they will cost us less. This is the basis for the Affordable Care Act. We all pay anyway. It will cost less to get them to the doctor for preventative care. So we tend toward the fundamental attribution error when we blame poor people and poor health on the person and ignore the conditions which create their poor health. We already know there is a difference in health based on gender. Problems of the cardiovascular system are the main killers of both men and women, with men twice as likely to die from a heart attack. Women survive longer than men, but in their old age, they're usually frail. Interestingly, women are the sicker sex, but they live longer. One reason for this might be that women are the family health providers. They learn a lot about health care and can use that to take care of themselves. They are also more attuned to their own health problems. I'm getting close to the maximum amount of time for this presentation, so I'll end here and talk with you again in the next section.